On the school level then, all these things are of course noticed and have some implications, but also there on the, on the ground level, so to speak, uh, you have a lot of events or things happening that are influencing the discussion about religion in education. Like the discussions about how to do impartial teaching or, or how to deal with religious uh, services that's, that are offered maybe by the local community or festivals how to make uh, common rituals and uh, festivals in the classroom, in the schools, what should they be based on, what kind of, of uh, narrative or what kind of symbols and so on. And this about the same space for talking about religious <coughs> questions and so on. There are a lot of issues coming up that are, are there irrespective of the solutions that are suggested or, or made at a higher level. So I see this, uh, this uh, things happening in Norway as, as, an, as examples of the kind of dynamics we enter into with religion and education in at least European uh, countries uh, today. Uh, because when we look at the, at, um, at the international situation, there is, as you know, a variety of systems. And always when people meet, like here, uh, talking about religion and education, we need a lot of time even after having been in the field for decades, to be reminded of what is actually the situation in your country, uh, politically, um, uh, in terms of legislation, and what is the practice in the classroom. And uh, so it's a very varied situation, and these systems are very different. Um, we find a lot of national-based controversies based on the historical background of the system in the particular country. And when changes are made, all the stakeholders come forth, and uh, this includes also the religious and belief communities. And also this is, uh, is treated in different ways, in different national contexts, whether they are invited into these kind of processes, or whether they are almost uh, totally outside of the whole discussion about religion and education. Then we have uh, the, the religion and state uh, discussion, of course, that also influences this. So the question I'm asking is why this question about conceptualization is, why is it important? Because I'm still not quite decided about how central it is to this whole uh, situation. But at least there is a complexity related to religion in education uh, that challenges this subject of religious education in a way that I don't think there is any parallel in any other school subject, where so many actors, so many stakeholders, so many uh, power uh, dynamics are at play related to a specific school subject. So one can understand the idea that why do we have this in school at all? Or why don't we kind of hide it or put it into some other subject rather than having it as a distinct subject of its own? And it also means that if we're talking about some kind of learning object in religious education, this is uh, not unproblematic. It's contested and challenged in different ways and controversial in different ways. So that may be also a reason for uh, going into the question about the conceptualization. Then we can think about the more practice in the classroom, the teachers, and they may deserve that the religious education researchers are trying to deal with this and discuss and possibly clarify what they are going to teach about, what is it they are going to teach. And then another reason is this strong story of discussion in the academic world uh, about uh, conceptualizing religion and whether that could be a, an interesting and fruitful route to, to follow. And there is this long debate that we have now also heard a little bit about in the last presentation. Uh, I'm thinking about this whole discussion about the definitions of, of, of religion and how this has developed from, from focusing on Christianity to a more broader focus on religion and uh, this is uh, also the history of uh, religious studies or history of religion developing out of, so to speak, the theological academic tradition and becoming independent from that and the two, the two um, disciplines or the two factions sometimes uh, discussing with each other the monologue from the from phenomenological approaches to the culture and you know about this, and I, I just want to list them up because this is a big discussion, of course, each of them, and there are also some missing, I guess. But, uh, but this could be then the resources we are drawing upon, and that's one of the questions I'm wondering about. Is this a fruitful uh, 
experience or academic tradition to draw upon when we are thinking about the situation in education. I think there are some problems with these university-based uh, uh, definitions or approaches. Um, one thing has to do with this idea of religion as a second order concept because it seems sometimes to become uh, to, 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 to sound counterintuitive for the students in school. So we, uh, you, you expect it maybe to be kind of enlightening, but you have some kind of first order experience with religion and then this, this, this distance perspective will make you understand better what is going on, but it's not always received like that. You get resistance towards it, and, uh, and then what do you do as uh, a teacher? Um, there is also this developmental aspect uh, that is very little reflected upon when these perspectives uh, are suggested. So one thing is if you take uh, experiences you have from the university teaching, and try to kind of transform that into upper secondary, maybe secondary school. There is some possibilities of that, but if you enter into the lower stages of school, how do you want to apply it then uh, in practical terms? And if you have had an experience with that kind of teaching or reading even textbooks for the first stages in school, and where you have to choose uh, two or three sentences about the big part of uh, religion, uh, for instance, um, it's really tricky to get these very complex uh, uh, conceptual issues into the dynamic. Uh, I think also there is an unresolved relationship between personal development as an aim in education and this, because that is part of the role of education is uh, usually some attack that idea that education is also contributing to personal development, but it's very present in most curricula. So how do you want to deal with that in, in uh, by drawing on discussions about conceptualization that kind of puts that uh, in the, uh, out of the room, so to speak. I find also that there is a uh, lack of self-reflexivity in the university practice itself, um, in the sense that um, there is there is not many studies of how uh, university departments and lecturers in religious studies, how they use the concept of religion in their own practice. We had an interesting uh, PhD uh, thesis in Denmark recently where field work was done among uh, university uh, teachers and uh, it was not completely let's say the, the way they dealt with the concept of religion in their publications was, was not quite in line with the what was taught and part of the general, um, let's say, discourse in the departments. So there could be many explanations for that. So one, of course, could be that actually in academia you're having the same troubles or the same challenges that you have in school. It's just seemingly that you have dealt with them when you see it as a purely a, a kind of publication uh, issue. But if you deal with it as a social, cultural issue in the, in the practice itself, it's maybe not, not as easy. And I think also finally that the, the, there is, uh, these are two contexts, university and school practice. And uh, there is maybe a need for more discussion about what happens to a concept like religion when you're moving it from one context to another context. So it's not only a question of, of simplifying academic thinking to something that is more easy to understand, but it's two different contexts with different <coughs> rules of functioning. Um, so the academic discipline has the idea that it's uh, searching for knowledge for the sake of getting new knowledge. But we also know that our research and our practice is increasingly having to respond to social and political and societal needs. Uh, so maybe we think in the beginning when we ask for funding that we're building this into it uh, as something we have to do. But uh, gradually we are, we are caught into this and uh, also um, that's, uh, that's something we can, we, we, we notice that, but still I think the idea lives that we are seeking knowledge for its own sake. 
Uh, and that means that the research perspective, in one way, is internal in terms of, of thinking about the context. It's, it's dealt with within the kind of university or research context. And uh, at the same time, it's used as a resource towards school situation by being uh, used for making textbooks or it's part of teacher education and so on. I think the school subject, if we think about religious education as a school subject, it is much more wide in many countries, at least if we take Norway, it's very wide. It's, uh, it's uh, religions, it's ethics, it's philosophy, and, and also secular worldviews. So how does that fit with the university department, so to speak, and the discussion about how you understand religion? That's quite different. Then it's part in school of general education, and we have this citizenship dimension or the personal development dimension, which is also part of the way we understand working or teaching and learning about religion. And we have this idea that it's part of, a, let's say, the, the life uh, students and people live. It's not only a, in, in relationship to a resource of knowledge, but towards the daily life situation. And finally, uh, it's back to the developmental aspect of it also. Uh, in school, we have children that are not uh, uh, independent uh, citizen grown-ups, they are uh, cared for by their parents and there is a f what we often call a fostering dimension in this and the, it means that the home has a role in the education and the question is uh, can, we quite, can we separate this from the discussion about the conceptualization of religion at least the parents usually don't think so, they may interfere in our discussion so what we think religion is uh, uh, we had an interesting uh, example in Sweden not so long ago. There was uh, some parents who complained that uh, their children were exposed to yoga in school and they considered this to be a religious practice and uh, it should not be allowed in school. And then this was sent to the inspectorate uh, uh, as a case in investigation. And they consulted experts in religion at the university who said that this is not religion. This is like physical education is just practical things. It's not nothing really to do with religion. So that in the Swedish framework that was solved. But of course, it is still on the agenda. What, what is religion in this case? Um, but for an authority, it's quite difficult to find another solution and to ask the experts. But it's very at least easy at hand to do that. There are also this, all these issues on school level that, that I call the concept, context sensitivity of religion as part of the school subject that you as a teacher enter into. And of course this is also done at university level, but either it's part of a, of a, a research project to investigate it, so you, you collect your data and you analyze and so on, or is used as kind of casual examples in the teaching that we can pick and choose and maybe reveal some other aspects of the conceptualization, but still it's not uh, kind of setting the agenda in the way that it can do often in a school situation. Uh, and I think uh, maybe this issue of the conceptualization has to be investigated on school level itself and not as a general question from, from uh, let's say, uh, an epistemological point of view <coughs> dealing with the academic level. I just also want to throw in another dimension of this. I've talked about the religious studies and the theological approach. I'm not talking so much about the pedagogical dimension, but one dimension in pedagogy could be content or child-oriented pedagogy. And I'd this is just a suggestion that different approaches to religion and education could be mapped in this field also, and that would be a slightly different way of approaching this question about the conceptualization of, of religion. Um, I just throw it out for consideration because I think it, uh, we, we should also uh, try to keep the, the, um, the subject area um, dimensions together with the pedagogical ones since we are dealing with uh, school and education. Um, I also argue that maybe some of this could be dealt with on the level of uh, uh, 
cooperation between uh, subjects in the humanities and also maybe the social studies.